Army, San Diego Comic Con, Kansas! I think we finally made it, Rich. I don't know, Robbie. I need a, I need take, a minute. Take a minute. What a, what a journey, Bob. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Holy I cats. Ah, oh, Richie. Unbelievable. What a, what a road. What a road it's been, Rich. What a road, Robbo. Twelve seasons going into old number 13. I mean... When, when we started on the show, yeah. we were in our knee socks. And 50. It was weird, being 50 in a knee socks. We were trendsetters, Babu. That's right. <laughs> trendsetters. Uh, for those of you who might be like, I don't know, new to school, in the wrong room, or way in the back and unable to see anything, this little blurry dot is Rob Benedict. You know him as God. And this little fuzzy thing is Richard Spade Jr. He played Gabriel. I did. And oh. most recently, he's uh, director of Supernatural. Yeah, every now and then. Bravo. Bring out our starting lineup, man. Let's get right into it, shall we? All right, so Kansas, those guys can sing. They can sing. But we brought our own singer. Please welcome executive producer and showrunner of Supernatural, Mr. Bob Singer. Bob o. OG Bobo! Bob Singer. There he is. The man that, no, Bob, no, we discussed this backstage. Uh, next to him, taking the stage, America's favorite Ackles, Jensen. Jensen Ackles! whose hair is getting, getting its own spin-off series. Yes, it is. Mr. Jared Padalecki! Yeah! There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I can't wait to see a show about crime-fighting hair. Yeah, it's gonna be a great series. And last but not least, not only is this gentleman a showrunner, but also the inventor of a new dance move, Andrew Dab. Andrew Dab! Uh, wow. Guys, congratulations on another amazing season. Season 12. Thanks. Amazing. Love yeah. it. But real quickly, Misha. sidebar. Misha! How about that opening? How about Kansas? <laughs> So we, we had we had fun moments backstage because these boys obviously wanted to watch the show. So they were trying on masks to see what would hide them. And uh, I can tell you, after surveying all the masks in the room, uh, no masks work. Nothing. It really does. Not... It's hard to hide the hair and the bow legs. You know what I mean? The... It tells the story. But seriously, I mean, this is a hell of a year. This has been unbelievable season. So much craziness. What were your uh, favorite episodes of this season? 12 and 20. Those are the, those are the ones you directed. Yep. Those are the ones you directed. You, uh, you got a favorite, Robbo? The other 21. You're a jerk. Um, <laughs> uh, no, seriously, the finale. I thought the finale was amazing. Yeah. The finale was... How about that finale? Congratulations on surviving in the finale. You're the only two. Yeah, we're the only two. <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a bloodbath. Yeah. So yep. uh, yeah, it really was. I mean, Rowena's toast. She's uh, I mean, she's literally toast. Yeah, toast. <laughs> uh, and uh, Crowley uh, sacrificed. Uh, yeah. And uh, mom is locked in another dimension with Lucifer. Kind of a dream date scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I mean Castile. I, I gotta. I did this. Bobby, buddy. I gotta, buddy. I gotta do this. Buddy. I gotta do this. Bobby. Did, did you really, did you really kill Castiel? You know, we, we have said over the course of time, one thing that keeps the show fresh and why we've gone into our 13th season is we say when we, when we write these things that um, you have to go where the story takes you. Uh, and, and, and Andrew and myself and the other writers, we thought that perhaps um, Castiel's time come 
Wait, wait. Frankly, and I think the, the guys will back me up on this, Misha had become a bit of a prima donna. Um, wanted to be number one on the call sheet, that's it. Um, uh, so, sorry guys, I guess I, I was back there, but they never told me to come out, but I heard my name, so yeah. I assume. Um, uh, this is awkward. Uh, uh, well, this just got really weird. Yeah. Yeah. You just, are you, I mean, you want to, you stop on, you want to keep crossing and go off that? Oh, no, I'm tired. I'll just rest right here. Um, oh, okay. well, now I guess maybe we should just ask him what's yeah. it like to not be on the show anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Misha's um, he's excited. <laughs> they, he they, they just had to take the story where it went, um, but I'm not going away. So. <laughs> That's so, yeah. uh. He's that, just gonna drop by set, do craft services, that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh... That's nice. It's called stalking in, uh, in America. Well, uh, clearly Mish is uh, here and he's gonna be back, but... But... But he is a prima donna. I will say, now that Mish is on stage, there are a few people that love you, but there was a really... So, so for the first time in 13 years, um, Ackles and I were like, we, we're not going to wait backstage while Kansas plays. We want to be in the audience. So they snuck us way into the back corner so we could watch while Kansas was playing. And a lovely young lady who was back there, and you know who you are, got up and started dancing. And then she's like, it turns over, and here's Misha. And she's like, hey, will you take my, oh my god! <laughs> hey, will you take... A full-on sort of like, I'm a Misha Migo. Um, so, um, well, she has that experience, but now there's a whole bunch of people in the back corner going, wait a minute. Are you telling wait me? Wait a minute! Jared Jensen and Misha were behind me? Ah! I'm gonna kill myself. <sighs> Bobo. <laughs> Richie. So let's talk uh, about so something season, that's actually yeah, season, relevant season to Season 13, you know, after that finale, where do you, what's the plan from here? Where do you go from there? Uh, well, episode one, Castiel dies. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll let Andrew handle that one. Sure. Well, I think for us, uh, season 12, by the end of season 11, when mom comes back, season 12, the guys kind of had the happiest situation they could have. Mom's back, all the friends are alive, they saved the world without having to sacrifice each other, um, and season 12 was... You really messed that up, didn't you? Just yeah. killed everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then season 13, we're like, well, that was a horrible idea, like, too much, everybody's nice, and who wants that? So then we just murder, which is, <laughs> which is really what the show's based on, it's just multiple serial homicides yeah. that everyone in this audience is witness to and probably will be indicted for, but that's a longer conversation. You're all colluding. That's right, this is collusion. I, there's something great about listening to Andrew talk seriously about the show while in the monitor, teeny tiny little Misha sits next to him <laughs> at the kids table. That's right. Just, <laughs> I like it, I like it. Can we, can we um, talking to the producers here, can we make this happen on set? Can he have just a little <laughs> chair? No more big cast I didn't yet. know he was allowed to sit. <laughs> I thought, contractually speaking, he was a <laughs> um, But so, so, listen, one of the big characters we saw at the end of the season, we saw Lucifer. He got himself a little boy. Uh, has a son, Jack. Now, this, uh, we see this character very briefly, curled up naked in the corner, uh, which is actually, ironically, how Rob started on the show. <laughs> that was just in my trailer before being called to set. And I was crying. Okay. <laughs> Weird. Um, but Jack is ha you know, half Lucifer, half mortal, so there's a lot of uh, moral ambiguity at play here. Andrew, you want to talk about that? I mean, where does this character, how's this character going to play into the season and, and 
and how do you think it'll develop over time? Yeah, well, I mean, as you mentioned, Rich, most of how we see the character is naked. And I think it's an important element to add, you know, Dynasty's coming on, we have to compete. That's just the way I look at it. And if, so if, if you were to die at the end of season 12, mm -hmm. like somebody on this stage, sure. would you come back naked? Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know that we can afford the blur effects. Honestly, like, it's just... Oh, you mean, you mean because it, it's like so much of the screen yeah, would have to yeah. be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, gotcha, I mean, gotcha. I mean, that's what I've been told by hair and makeup, so... Well, I, I, know, what you, I know what you mean, because you'd have, to, you'd have not just one blur, you'd have to have three blurs? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually four because of the third nipple. That's right. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's great to, to have this conversation because we all know Jared's been very honest on his Twitter feed. Yeah. <laughs> And I think this is a healthy for forum to discuss this. I thought I mean, that was yeah. so brave. So brave. Oh. So accurate. I, so brave. I, I will say that after, uh, and I had, I had several friends and family members um, call me to say, like, dude, did, are you Twittering some stuff? And I was like, huh? So to tell you from my end of the story, um, we're out. We're in Chicago a, couple days, uh, a week ago, and I go to bed about 11 o'clock. And I get some sleep, and I wake up at 4 o'clock to, like, go to the bathroom or something. And I have all these, like, your Twitter was favorited. Your Twitter was liked. Your Twitter was favorited. Your Twitter was, like, I, my Twitter, like, did I tweet something? And then I have it's one. A, your tweet is really gaining traction. Yeah, your tweet is gaining traction. Make a comment. And I was like, and so then I have one text message, not from Jensen, not from Misha, not from Bob or Andrew or Richard or Rob. It's from Matt Cohen. And I was like, <laughs> Matt, is he okay? Because he's not the type to text me at, like, 2 in the morning. So I open it up, and it just says, dude, Twitter. I was like, huh. So I open my Twitter. I didn't realize he's fluent in Ackles. Yeah. That's a, dude, Twitter. It may like have it. Been, yeah. it. It may have been Twitter, dude. Or dude it was, but those two words, I don't remember the order. And so then I open my, my Twitter, and I'm like, that's the last time I hand my phone over to Misha Collins. In fairness, I think it was two years ago at Comic Con that I posted. <laughs> you were like, you grabbed my phone when I when we were signing, and apparently I posted on Twitter, "I hate fans," uh, <laughs> which is a great Whoa. thing to post at Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> and for the rest of the signing, everybody was coming up like, "Ugh, <laughs> we hate you too, Misha." <laughs> That's right. I remember when panic set in because we we do a signing after this. And we're signing, and you pass, and you sign, and you pass. And then Misha, upon realizing that, so he had just put his phone on the table, and it was on, and I was like, <laughs> put it back. Upon, I think, I think, like, you got a bunch of phone calls or something. He was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I had to, like, excuse himself. Um, yeah, you've done that to almost all of us, and that's why we were high-fiving when we saw that tweet. We're like, yeah. yes. Someone finally got him. Yeah, that's why you didn't get a lot of warning phone calls from yeah. friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, bringing it back, so uh, Jensen, how, how will uh, Dean and Sam react to this Jack character? Uh, differently. <laughs> Dude. Cool. I told you they were going to make this yeah, hard. I, I didn't. I begged you not to ask them questions. <laughs> Go to your no, notes. Go to your notes. There's been a lot of build-up for this. I mean, the whole season has been dealing with there Kelly is. Klein and, and... It's um, obviously the, the, you know, mom being gone and Cass and all of this kind of uh, uh, turmoil that the, 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 the brothers find themselves in. Now they have this person, this, this thing, this entity, um, and in Dean's mind, just simply has to go. Um, but because uh, technically it's half human, um, the ever optimistic Sam Winchester uh, Did you say thinks. Half, what's that? Half female? Half human. Half human, got it. Um, There's a weird, I'm, I'm in a weird echo spot, so I'm catching. It's a vortex. Um, so there, there. Half female? We, uh, we, <laughs> we have two different ideas of how, uh, how to handle the situation. By the way, I'll. Does Jared know we're doing a panel? I I'm just so. uh, I don't think so. say it again. <laughs> Do you Somebody know that we're wake doing up a panel like for Comic Con right now. 
Okay. Uh, anyway, but, but I yeah, tried. Yeah, but that character could go either way. It could be evil. Could be. Ha- have Sam and Dean encountered uh, somebody with these sort of characteristics before? The sort of the half loose for half human is. Have they wrestled this moral dilemma previously? To this degree, uh, it's kind of difficult, right? I'm trying to think of the last time. Well, no, this is this is the spawn of the devil. So. Right. Yeah. Which I don't know why anyone would want to see how that works out. <laughs> you know what? Let's see how this plays out. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a Dean's a little more practical. I have an idea. Let's shoot it in the yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam's a bit like, that might just piss it off. Uh, I think well, at least we'll know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I think Sam. Uh, I, I, kudos to Bob and Andrew and the rest of our writers. It's 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 a neat. We've danced around this a couple times, but not to this degree. The whole nature versus nurture argument. Um, and so it is. Jack certainly is half Lucifer, but he's also half Kelly Klein, right? And Kelly Klein was a good person, and so. Um, Sam, ever the optimist, is trying to figure out what to do, and, and Dean, being Dean, uh, shoot first, ask questions later, um, has his idea. Right. <laughs> Some things never change. And Andrew, is that a journey that, will, that Jack himself will go on in, in his sort of d- development and trying to figure out which side he's, he's on? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the character, you know, obviously, as Jared Jensen talked about, they've got strong opinions. I think from Jared's point of view, especially from Sam's point of view, Sam was a character who was, as we remember from way, way back, destined to do very bad things. And Whoa! Then, <laughs> yeah, and still may. A lot of, lot of years left. Um, but he's some... <laughs> or not. I don't, I don't really know. Um, uh. But, uh, but, but the idea that I think Sam can kind of put himself, in, put himself in, that sho- in those shoes a little bit better. And then for Jack himself, he's someone who I think is struggling with that and will continue to struggle with that in our version of Hell's My Two Dads. And then uh, Misha, um, so you've been doing a lot of gardening or? <clears throat> yeah, so you, can, um, you, you, you can't plant tomatoes until uh, July. So that's what I'm getting into now. Cool. That's great. Great. Anywho. Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> um, and so, ma- so mom, mom is trapped in this other dimension, this other R- world. Right. Um, and so much, Robbie, of this season. <laughs> so much of this season, you were there was a the Mary character, wonderfully played by Samantha Smith. Um, <laughs> you guys had a. a service that story really well and, and the way Sam reacted to Mary and the way uh, Dean was reacting to Mary and how you guys were coping with her return, dealing with the British Mental Letters. Now that she's had this experience and has now you know, made this move to try to do the right thing and now finds herself on the other side of this wall, of the, in this hole, how, how do Sam and Dean differ in their approach to how to handle that situation? Um... Dean thinks she's um, gone, that uh, she went through the rift. It's a rift, Rich, not a hole. I was just making sure you read the notes. Okay. Um, She went through the rift, the hole, um, with Lucifer, and the whole rift closed. And Dean is pretty sure that that's that's curtains for mom. And and while he's bereft over that, uh, he's ready to accept that. Sam th- thinks, no, she went through alive. We've been on the other side of this rift. Um, he's holding on to the fact that she could still be alive, and it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a problem between the guys uh, because Sam's uh, mission in the beginning part of uh, season 13 is let's find mom, and uh, Dean's idea is we have bigger fish to fry. Mom's dead. You're just going to have to come to that realization. Um, spoiler alert, mom is not dead. I told you. Great. I told you. <laughs> Come with me. D- Dean's kind of a Debbie Downer at the beginning of the season. Deanie Downer. Wah, Deanie wah. Downer. wah, wah, wah. Let's kill Jack. Mom is dead. Everybody's dead. Um, yeah, good. I didn't know mom wasn't dead. I like that. Read the scripts. He hasn't read a script since season seven. <laughs> That's what we're on, right? Is season seven? 
And, and so in the Mary storyline, by the way, Mary, who is in, with Lucifer in this, on the other side of the rift, uh, is, uh, she's got her own journey. She's got her own challenges to face now. And Andrew, how do we see that playing out for her? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of Mary, obviously she came back. She came back with a very, you know, at first very kind of spun out. She didn't ask to come back. She was brought back. She was sent back. It took her a while to find her footing, I think, you know, with the world at large and more specifically with her sons. And by the end of the season, I think they were, everyone was in a very good place. Uh, she's been lost. You know, over on the other side, here she's got someone who, as far as Mary's concerned, she made the sacrifice knowingly. She went through that rift knowingly. Like, I don't know that she is necessarily, you know, that, that's something she's kind of, I think, comes to terms with. That doesn't mean she's not active. That doesn't mean she doesn't want to make this, this world a better place because the world she's gone into is far worse than the world in which our guys live day to day. And then I also think, you know, one of the interesting things about Jack is that, as we know, the only person that's ever opened a rift to this world is Jack. So if Jack is the key to getting back, one, how do you convince him to do that? Can you convince him to do that? And do you want him to do that? Because you're just opening a hole to an apoc a, a world in which has been ravaged by the apocalypse. You know, you hope, that, you hope that door is one way, but maybe it's not. And so I think those are all things everyone's kind of struggling with. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> you brought up a good point that she did it knowingly. So Mary sacrificed herself for the good of the Winchesters. Crowley sacrificed himself for the good of the Winchesters. Did anybody else die in the finale? Not that, that, that I'm that aware maybe of. Did not sacrifice themselves um, for for somebody else's good. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm willing to read recaps, Twitter, if you want to let me know. But eh. um, no, I mean a big part of the final episode was you had all these people, and really a lot of part of the season, you had a lot of people who came to, and it was really about how Samadine impacts each other, but also other people. So you saw how they impacted other hunters. You saw the, how they impacted, you know, Crowley and Rowena and Castiel. And so a lot of part, a lot of, you know, what ended up being our last two episodes was a lot of people, Jody Mills, a lot of people stepping up and essentially, you know, do, helping the Winchesters in the way the Winchesters helped so many people. And that was really important to us, is to build a sense of community. And then because it's supernatural, you tear it all down. But, you know, over the course of the season, that was really what it was about. And then speaking of this uh, apocalypt apocalyptical? Apoc uh, Apoc apocalyptical? I think that's a piece of exercise equipment. I, was on the, I spent 20 <laughs> minutes on the apocalyptical this morning. Um, speaking of this uh, apocalyptical world, um, what, we, what, what, happened, <laughs> what happened was, uh, so we saw Bobby, who... Yeah. And... What this other world seems to do is uh, it's, a, it's another uh, alternate reality. So it's right. Bobby, but it's, a, it's Bobby living a different life. He doesn't know the boys. Right. So is this world, could that open up for other characters to reappear in the same way? <laughs> Did you have anybody specific? I mean, well, there's like, not... Like, sounds, this sounds more like a pitch than a question. Well, I'm just curious, does God... Like, how does, where does God... Am I coming back, Bob? <laughs> You are God of the universe, but it's a really big universe. Uh, you, you know, it's possible. You know, it depends how you do here today. Uh, oh, crap. Uh, Gabriel? Yeah, I don't think so. Come on! What does that to, we'll do our, our own spinoff, Rich. Fine, Baba. Um, um, so, but, but so that world could open up uh, to bring some other characters back. It like definitely that. could, yes. Yeah. By the way, by the way, because we love to tease Rich and we don't know if Gabriel, I mean, we love that character, but I think for first and second time directing, Richard Spate's direction on this show has been just fantastic and we're just so happy with Rich. Thank you. A huge compliment. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Um, can you uh, tease any characters that will be back, or no, we're not doing that yet? Um, I think... <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by tease, he means give them a hard time. Really. <laughs> yeah, 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 just poke at people. I'm like, no. Um, I think we've got some cool characters coming back, both in our world and in the Apocalypse world. So that's the fun of it, is, you know, we've got some people coming back, like, you know, um, Missouri Mosley's going to come back for us for the first time in a long time. Um... You know, obviously, uh, Jody will be back for us and some other people like that. And then in Apocalypse World, uh, without getting into spoilers, um, some people who have been uh, long dead on our show are less dead in Apocalypse World and much different characters. It's not as dead. That, that's it's exciting. Of deadness. It's more injured. Well, 
Yeah. 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 That's promising. You, so my phone number that hasn't was, changed. Was shifty. FYI. Yeah. <laughs> Very shifty. You know, this, we're talking about a show that has been on since half this room wasn't born. I mean, you're going 13 years <laughs> into a show. And the thing I think that makes Supernatural special in the world of television for not just us who are involved with it, but also for you folks who watch it, is that it continues to reinvent itself. It continues to be interesting, tell fun stories, tell engaging stories that are emotional and, and connect with the audience. And that's all, if I may say, driven by the fabulous performances of you two gentlemen who continue to do outstanding work. Misha came along and slowed it down for a while, but now he's gone. And we can get back to the business of making quality TV. Um, so for, you, for your journey... This joke we may, is not we, funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day of my life. Um, but if we can be reflective for a moment about, and Bob, you've been with the show since the beginning as well. So the question is for all three of you. Season one to now, how has your experience been and how, how has your relationship with both the show and, your, in your case, Jensen and Jared, your characters, how has it evolved over this long period of time? That's an easy question. Um, how was the last 13 years of your life? <laughs> Great. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Uh, that, that it is hard to, to you know, speak quickly about uh, the experience that we've had. Um, obviously, it's the longest job I've ever held. Um, and, and I guess one of my favorite things, one of many things that I love about doing this job is that um, we're never doing the same thing twice. Uh, every day is a, a new experience. We're telling different stories. There's new characters to introduce and uh, old characters to finally get rid of. And it's that kind of crappy acting that got you fired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's I mean, look, uh, it, it, it's been wonderful. It, the experience has been great. Um, you know, we've we've had uh, we've had our ups and downs. We've had uh, we've had um, uh, great seasons. We've had maybe not so great seasons. It's been it's an ebb and flow. And uh, but I think through it all, uh, it is uh, it has been wonderful. And I'm very proud to be a part of something that's lasted this long. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with everything he just said. Um, I think for me also, it was kind of specifically, and it's hard, it's difficult for me to identify the chicken and the egg, not that I would even know which came first anyways. Well, one is when, a bird. There's some, <laughs> one is and the, the other little Twitter doesn't thing. really move. Uh, that's right. Got it. That's what it is. Uh, Glad to help. No, it's, it's a... But Jared was a lot, Jared and Sam were sort of similar season one uh, in that I was like, man, this is hard work. Like, it's, this is difficult to be uh, up in Vancouver. I had no friends. I was living in a hotel room. We didn't know if we had a job for more than two months because we hadn't been picked up for a season. We hadn't even really aired yet, so we didn't have any, we didn't have this family, which is badass, that we have now to support us. Yeah, and there was nothing, Twitter didn't exist. I don't mean maybe it existed, but it wasn't like, oh, well, I'm getting support from my f friends that aren't here. Uh, iPhones didn't exist. iPhones, that's right. Came out like season one, right? I know, Jesus. <laughs> Love you back. So crazy. Um, so it, 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 gradually, as the show has gone on, both Sam and Jared have realized that this is life. And life is pretty great. It can be. It can have its ebbs and flows. To borrow what he was talking about, it's ups and downs. Um, it's good days and it's bad days. But it's wonderful. And to look out here after 13 years and see how many thousand people jumping around and dancing. And Kansas is here. Yeah. I mean. Um. Yeah. I I met my wife on the show. We have three kids. Right. Uh, she's here somewhere. She's somewhere out there. Um. Same. But it's changed a lot. 
Um, can Stop I, touching can I add one, one thing, even though I wasn't there at the beginning? We were talking on, um, I'm, I know I'm new and, and now I'm gone, um, but <clears throat> we were talking about this on Friday. Um, someone asked us about a question about sort of the eventual demise of the characters and the end of the show, and Jensen started talking about a, a vision that he had, a dream that he had had about, oh, yeah? about the demise, uh, about the end of the show, and about Sam uh, dying. And the amazing thing about it was when he was describing this dream, the three of us kind of got choked up because we all know these characters so well, they're so a part of us that, the, that we have actually sort of taken them into our own emotional family, if that makes any sense. They feel real to us. And so it, the thought of Jensen as Dean losing Sam is actually like heartbreaking, which is kind of amazing. And, and that could only possibly happen, I think, um, with a show that's been running for this long. That was what was remarkable when I went back at the end of season 11 and you go up a couple times a year to direct, the, the enthusiasm is all still there. The writing is still 100%, you know, and, and these two, you guys are doing work that I'm like, wow, season 11, 12, 13 of a show, you think people are phoning it in. You're absolutely not phoning it in. That's why it's continually, consistently great. Let me uh, just, uh, just tell one story that I, I think really uh crystallizes the relationship that everyone has in this show. I was directing an episode, I can't remember which one, uh, we were gonna do a scene with Jared and Jensen. Uh, about 30 minutes before we were supposed to shoot the scene, they come to me and they say, um, I think we should switch parts. I think what's written for, for Dean is actually, should be Sam and vice versa. And I said, really guys, now you come to me with this? I think we had already blocked the scene and they were lighting it. And we went to, exact, we're like, hey, I think I should take all of Dean's lines and Jensen should take all of Sam's lines. You know, uh, changing Dean and well, Sam. Because we were, we, were, we were rehearsing it, we were running it, and it just, we were kind of tripping over the dialogue a bit. And we we're just like, what, something's, something's not right. And it, it was you, you were like, let's try something. And we've never, ever done this and haven't done it since. But um, he was like, you read all of Sam's lines as Dean and I'll take all of Dean's lines, read them as Sam. Okay, so we tried it, and it was it just worked. We we're like, you know, the light bulb went off, and we went over to Bob and said, Bob, hey, Bob, what Bob, do you think? One of our producer writers to tell him, like, hey, you know, <laughs> we're gonna completely change the entire scene and flip the dialogue. And of course, he probably thought it was a joke. Well, no, you had a serious look, but I was going, I don't. Know. How is this? Yeah, gonna we're work? actors, Bob. We're actors. So, so we went off. We went off into a corner, and they did it, and I heard it. And I said, yeah, that's right. You guys are absolutely right. We had to reblock a little bit, not, not, nothing terrible. Um, but the idea, I think, that uh, they're always in the moment like this and, 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 and thinking about what they do, and also that I think they feel comfortable enough with, uh, with the producing staff to, you know, to come up and sort of want to make this honest change and that we are comfortable enough with the actors to know that this is not about ego or anything else. This is just about making the show better. Um, and the relationship that I think we all have is, is really special. And getting back to why I'm still here, I think, is because these relationships are, uh, are really dear to me. And um, I, I just appreciate every day that I can work on the show. So. That's fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's... I think it's to, uh, Again, I couldn't have said it better. I think it's, it's we obviously, and I think y'all in the audience know this, as much as we tease the short one at the end, and um, we all truly enjoy each other as people. Um, it's not fake, like, hey, let's go pretend to have a bite to eat so someone takes a picture and it looks like we're friends. We, we, have, we have legitimate friendship aside from working together, um, but that doesn't always translate uh, onto the page or onto the screen or into the work environment. But I feel like, especially 13 years in, we have a lot of trust with each other. Like, if I feel like I... I remember a scene in Croatoan, um, season two or one, and we were doing a scene where Sam had been infected and thought he was going to die. And for whatever reason, it hit Jared too hard, and I was, like, crying, 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 way, like, way too far. It was embarrassing, really. It wasn't... <laughs> His face was not just leaking. And, but, and... But, but they weren't they weren't Sam's tears. Um, and so Bob, 
uh, I didn't realize at the time, I was like, man, I really broke down. Like, that must look, that must, this is going to be a cool scene because, like, I was legitimately just crying my eyes out. And Bob came up and just kind of like, I think he's like, hey, everybody, take five minutes. Because it, it had stayed with me. And he kind of came in. He's like, hey, that was a great take. Um, uh, I want you to take a minute and just do it again and just dial it back a little bit, you know, G go there. No, but, but it wasn't like, and he was, he was, he was, uh, it was gentle and kind and honest as a director to go to an actor who just broke down and went like, that you clearly went somewhere and it was touching, but that, that wasn't Sam. And he was absolutely right. And I was like, got it. Um, and I think that's kind of, when I was like, I, maybe you don't remember, maybe you remember it, but yeah, it was, I trusted him, just like he said with the, there's, there's trust here. Um, aside from our personal friendship, there's a lot of, tr I, I trust that they care about the show and the characters. They know that Jensen and I care about Dean and Sam, you know, so. Yeah, the, show, the show has become, it's a show's about family, but the show is a family. It's clear when you see it from the outside, when you visit as an actor, when you visit as a director, from the whole crew, from you guys all the way down the list and in L.A. It's a family, and it's an it's impressive thing to witness. Yeah. truly is. And the, 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 the other member of the family, by the way, the fans. <laughs> so now let's take some, Bobby, I mean. Yeah, let's open it up. Let's take questions for the fans. All right, let's do it. Hello. Uh, first, I wanted to say love the show. Um, my question isn't really a question. My daughter has social anxiety, which is why I'm speaking for her. But we just wanted to say thanks both to Jared, well, actually all you guys for all the different, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, charities. Charities and, and different, you know. Causes. Causes, thank you. Um, organizations that you guys have set up for people like me who can't talk or, you know, her with her social anxiety. Um, but she just, I can see it from her or through her how she's grown just from the support that you give, even not knowing her personally. And then uh, one side note, Misha, thank you for the donuts this morning. They're awesome. Nice to meet you. What's your daughter's name? Uh, Kaylee. Kaylee, nice to meet you. That's very, very brave of you to stand up in front of thousands of people. Uh, very proud of you. Well, let's be honest. It's, it's embarrassing, embarrassing to see Misha, Misha suck, suck up, up that, that hard to the fan base. That's, That's not going to change the outcome. He, each, each donut had, did you look at the wrapper? It said, please, if you take this donut, please tweet to Andrew Dabb to bring me back. It was actually a binding contract. If you take this donut, you have to send him hate mail until I come back. I don't know, did you notice the billboard coming into town? Save Castiel. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Emily. I'm a huge fan. Um, I had a question about what was your favorite props, Jensen, Misha, and Jared, like throughout the show. And yeah, I really love you guys. <laughs> love you back. Favorite, Thank favorite you. props throughout, from throughout favorite the show? Favorite prop. Um, baby. baby is not a prop. <laughs> no. No, baby is a part of me. Um, I, you know, we get to we get to play uh, uh, and use so many um, uh, tools, weapons. Um, I will say that uh, um, one of the one of the weapons that we we play around with quite often, um, the angel blade, is one of my favorites because of of the weight of it. And I just constantly am spinning it in my hand, and it's, it kind of reminds me, it's, you know, the, the little, what are they called? Fidget, fidget spinners. Fidget spinner. It's the original the one. The original fidget spinner. <laughs> OG fidget spinner. My, my favorite prop is Dean. And that's why he's no longer with us. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I think the, uh, the hair? hair. You know, yeah, the he way. does have the, he has the best toupee in the business. It truly is. Look at it. I, um, I'm going to say 
the demon blade, uh, the Ruby's demon blade, not for obvious reasons. But there's another funny thing that I don't know if y'all know this. Some of y'all have maybe seen uh, prop demon blade, which is kind of ironic, or maybe uh, uh, like saying Nile River or something. Um, so, or Sahara Desert, Sahara, sorry. So some of y'all have seen the like replica demon blades, the Ruby's knife. It was actually put together incorrectly when it first got on camera. The handle is improperly, uh, yeah, it's upside, like the handle should be the backwards way compared to where the serration is and the blade is. And for some reason, I found that out early on, and it always occurs to me whenever I hold it, because when you hold it, not like there are scenes where I have to pull it out of my back pocket or something, um, and I, you put it in a certain way, expecting the handle to fit ergonomically a certain way, and then you pull it out, and the blade is facing me, and I'm like, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> I switch it around, and then pull it out, and it's ready. But um, I really dig the, uh, the, the demon blade. Hi, uh, my name is Bibiana. And I wanted to ask, in the episode Yellow Fever, people died from their fears. So I was wondering, what would you die of, basically? What, what fears do we have that we would die from? I don't have fear. Bears. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I guess uh, for me it would be just uh, dab, being... Dab went, a little, dab went heart disease. <laughs> I mean, statistically speaking, Liver it's failure. most likely. <laughs> For me, I think it would be uh, just being, like, it's like a classic sort of uh, fear, but uh, it would be being up on stage with a in front of a large number of people with my friends making fun of me. In, in, a, in a little boy chair. In a tiny, tiny chair. Just a bunch of chairs collapse over on you. Yeah. I don't know, what... what, what? What fear would you die of? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, wow. And he, he does this, and he didn't even get a donut. Bob Singer never got a donut. Oh, this is... Oh, man, I tell you. Bob, thank you. Nisha, you are... You are so fired by accepting that gesture. By the way, that's all for today, guys. Thanks. You walked right into that. So, fear. Where would you, you land on that? Like, where are you in the fear bit? In the fear bit? I don't know. Um, I, I would say this. Uh, about 13 years ago, this probably would have killed me. Um, the. Uh, this is not, I mean, we're up here talking and having a good time and making jokes, but uh, it's, it's daunting. I mean, there are a lot of people in this audience, and to get up and try to speak eloquently and not trip over your words or just not trip uh, is, uh, is, is, can, be, can be pretty frightening. So um, I've been able to face that and kind of get over it, and now I'm here and there, there isn't much fear, but years ago that certainly would have been one for me. How about... Daddy, I think I'm in love. <laughs> JJ, like, first date, daughter's first date. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> Boys <laughs> and my daughter's life. Yeah. Fear number one. I get that. What I is it? What is it the, the guns don't kill people? Uh, dads with pretty little girls kill people? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You. Hi, um, I am going to be the last question, so I hope it's good. My name is Megan. This is Jensen. Jensen! <laughs> and this is Baby. Yes. Um, and so is Baby going to be named Baby? Please name Baby, Baby. Possibly. How old is Jensen? A year and a half. Nice. Well, bud, that, uh, that, that name served me well. I hope it serves you well. What, what is, what's, what's his middle name? Michael. Michael. Archangel. But of course. I have to ask my question. They're yelling at me. Okay, sorry. Question. Um, which character do you feel would make the most interesting spinoff? <laughs> uh, oh, no, no. No, sir. What? Uh, 
we very much feel that we have some really, really strong female characters in the show. Um, Jody Mills, Claire Novak, uh, Donna Hanscom, and Alex Jones. And we feel they would make an extremely exciting addition to the Supernatural Universe. There we go. Gentlemen, here we are. Here we are. The end of yet another panel. San Diego Comic Con. Somebody literally goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> it ends? Certainly shocked. I know. So, uh, any... Parting words uh, for the people gathered here today? Uh, yes. Thank you all. So much. And I think we've kind of touched on it before, but we exist like this because you all exist like that. So this is 50-50 this is here. This, we're the ones on stage, but this is uh, as much y'all as it is us. So thank y'all for giving us the chance to play these characters and tell this story. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys, everybody. Say hello and goodbye to Andrew Dabb. Bob Singer. Misha Collins. Jared Padalecki. And Mr. Jensen Ackles. Thank you guys. Thank you, San Diego.